England went to India knowing full well that they were going to have to face a lot of spin. Well, the second test match is well and truly underway, and this is the place to be following the action every day of the series. Alongside me is Gareth Batty, former England spinner, who's got some interesting things to say about the state of the Chennai track. Don't forget to use the comment section below and like and subscribe. Jaruta swept into the leg side, top edge, Portis, short backwards square leg, Ashwin takes the catch, tosses that one up and he's bald Stokes, he gave it some air, he tossed it up, he doesn't give it air much to Zard Ashwin. So well and truly India's day, 15 wickets falling on day two at Chennai, but 10 of them were Englishmen and most of them went the way of spin, no doubt about it, it was Ravishandran Ashwin again, another five for and at times, Bats, he looked absolutely unplayable. He did, he ball beautifully. He used the conditions of the surface, which we've seen from ball one pretty much. There's been some bounce, there's been some spin, but he didn't just rely on the fact of the, of the surface giving him something. He was very smart how he used the crease. He'd draw the batsmen across the wickets to then hit them on the pad or get them the wrong side of the ball. He wouldn't try and spin every ball. He used the pitch to his advantage. He used all his skill, all his craft. And uh, it was an absolute pleasure to watch. He held the game as well. He didn't go for any runs. He Just an absolute masterful performance. And at the other end, Axar Patel, I thought, on debut, you know, getting Joe Root, what a wicket to get first up. For the rest of his career, when people like me say to him, who was your first test wicket? He will say, um, one of the best batsmen in the world, Joe Root. But I thought the two dovetailed really nicely today. Yeah, and I, and I think that complemented Ashwin. Uh, Ashwin looked more comfortable with Axar at the, at the other end as opposed to Nadim in the first test match. Um, first wicket, Joe Root. I mean, phew, the way he's playing as well. He's playing as well as anybody in the world. And to get him out as he did, there was a bit of, dece you know, he deceived him in the air and a bit of flight and obviously a little bit of spin off the surface. But the way he complemented him by that, I mean, he, he was able to ball directly into the surface. Not always very fast, but direct making the batsmen hold their line, do them on the inside and the outside. He didn't get the bag of wickets that Ashwin did, but he allowed Ashwin to perform as he does. And it was very much like Ashwin did, yeah, just so sure, just different uh, personnel. But in terms of England, though, getting bowled out for 134, that's disappointing in itself, but really was the damage done on day one rather than day two. I think the way to look at it from an England point of view is to look at uh, Rohit Sharma's innings, 161. You take that out of the equation and England, you know, are not that far below uh, the India total. Um, but um, obviously that was absolute class from Sharma. England will, will rue a few dismissals and a, a few moments within uh, the game. But uh, you've got to take some calculated risk when that, there is a ball in the surface. We saw some... Beautiful bowling, you know, Sibley, I don't think he can do a lot, of, uh, Lawrence, sorry, I don't think he can do a lot about that ball. It was a beautiful piece of bowling and he played very well up to that point, faced 50 balls for his runs. Uh, England had some really good points, but uh, ultimately you're going to say they've just fallen a bit short. Uh, and in terms of batting in these conditions, and we're going to talk about the conditions a little bit later in the show, is it the kind of experience that the England players will learn from and get better from as the series goes on or can the reverse be the case and suddenly you've got the feeling that the Indian bowlers have got the mark over or the sign over the England batsman and that's going to be a huge problem from here on in? I think for most, they, they spent quite a bit of time out there. Uh, you know, I used Lawrence earlier, but uh, the partnership between Pope and, and Root uh, and, and Fox, sorry. Um, was an extended period of balls. You know, they trusted their defence. It wasn't like they were a cat on a hot tin roof and looking like getting out every ball. Once they got through that initial period, they looked as though they had a good method. They rotated the strike. And I felt like England had periods where they were just building and then they just lost the wicket uh, at the wrong time. And obviously, you rely on your absolute jet great players to get the bigger scores because your younger learning players or inexperienced probably don't have that same uh, sort of power on the game and can put their foot down at any one time. So Rohit Sharma's innings is looking even better and better and better as the game goes on. OK, well, that's fascinating. But we got to talk about India in more depth and we've got to talk about the state of that pitch because there was a lot of criticism certainly in England on the state of the Chennai track but is that deserved? Yes this is not an ideal test match pitch uh, but once in a while in these extraordinary circumstances you will find it same venue two matches 
So that's former India batsman Akash Chopra talking about the state of the pitch and uh, some sympathy for the curator because, you know, as Akash made mention, two pitches inside a week. And of course, the one that's used this test match, that's been baking under the sun. You can't have that under covers during the first test match. And also, look, Lords in 2017 when India were over here, that was heavily weighted in favour of the home side. Even Stuart Broad's spell at Trent Bridge back in 2015 against the Aussies. Again, heavily weighted in favour of the home team. So that's just part and parcel of touring, touring abroad. Of course it is. And England went to India knowing full well that they were going to have to face a lot of spin. Um, I think we have to look at uh, everything that's happened in the game. Always Stone has bowled quickly, 90 miles an hour. He's got the ball to go through. He wasn't taken out of the game by the surface being poor. So you can't say that the seamers are not in the game. Batsmen have been able to score runs. Admittedly, it's been difficult. But if you have a skill set and you're prepared to take the odd calculated risk, you can score runs on it. We've seen that. And you can bat for periods of time. The fact that it, it's disturbing the surface is the bit that people are talking about. But it's not done anything stupidly untoward, as we say at the minute. Mm. I, I just think it is loaded uh, in, in India's favour, and rightly so, because it is their advantage to be playing at home. I, personally, I, do, I don't see a problem with it. The other thing that comes to mind is the fact that England came in with four changes. Three of them, uh, one of them enforced because of an injury to Joffre Archer. India came in with three changes. And you've got to say that it's worked better for India than it has for England, with both... Um, uh, Mohamed Siraj uh, bowling well and of course um, uh, Axar Patel coming in and bowling well today Yeah, I, I, I'm not speaking out of turn I said as the two teams lined up the one change that is going to be the difference in the game is Axar Patel and I really do feel that still the way he allowed Ashwin to bowl Ashwin was very comfortable throughout his whole spell which we didn't always see in the first test match and I think he allowed Ashwin to feel confident and could go and, and bowl to take wickets and also took wickets himself. But he held the game. The game was going nowhere for pretty much the whole innings. England were trickling along at 2-0, and but there was no periods. And I think that's because the left arm spin of Axel Patel was able to bowl directly into the surface and hold the England right-handed batters on off stump. They couldn't move around the crease to manipulate and knock the ball around. I think he was the difference for that 20 overs that he bowled today. Brilliant stuff. Well, uh, we will always be uh, focusing on India as well as England in Outside Edge throughout this series, which you can follow exclusively live on Talk Sport 2. But in and amongst uh, the horror for England, there were a few uh, comical moments and uh, just a reminder that sometimes it's a bit difficult to commentate off the TV. Here's uh, Ashwin. Uh, beg your pardon. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Neil Manthorpe just about pulled himself back, didn't he? And Mark Nicholas nearly went as well a little bit later on in the piece. But it wasn't just a commentary. Uh, take a watch of this. This is uh, Simon Clare, a guest on Talk Sports Weekend Sports Breakfast Show. Uh, H1 England sounds very unattractive. Um, this it would be literally one of the greatest comebacks in Test history from this position. Uh, John's absolutely right, John Norman, great. Um, oh, wicket's just gone. You may want to go back to John in a second. But uh, this, the score that England were looking at was around the 160 mark. But uh, I'm actually giving you a live update from my TV. You <laughs> <are>. <laughs> oh, sorry, I shouldn't be doing that probably. But, uh, anyway, England in all sorts of trouble. Um, it looks like it's going to go one all, but it does open up the Test Series, which is great news. That might have been a replay. You might have been done <laughs> oh, no. a replay, Simon. So. I was about to give you odds <laughs> oh for that not being... God. That's why I'm not John Norman and you have a live man on site because I'm watching a replay on television. This is one of those embarrassing moments ever. Well, we're all laughing at that, but uh, Joe Root and the English side weren't laughing at uh, what is our moment of the day and that involved another iffy decision by the third up. Uh, mowing balls. Oh. That's left to look well. They appeal for LBW because they don't think a shot's been offered. And I don't either, really. I I'm a great Rowett fan, but I think he's tucked his bat behind his pad. Pitting outside, impact outside. There's been precious little ill feeling between these two sides. The game has been played out in really good spirits. But what you don't need is decisions consistently going against you. And I think England could feel hard done by. There was a decision... Uh, which didn't go their way on day one. I think it was Rohane on the sweep. It didn't really matter, but it came off the glove and the third umpire didn't look at the video all the way through. I thought the dismissal of Burns today, if you take the crowd out and a brilliant appeal from Ishant Sharma, 
I don't think the umpire's giving that, but that may just be my English bias. But the LBW decision late on day two against Rohit Sharma. Now, for those of you who haven't seen it, essentially props forward and plays with his bat behind the pad. Now, Nasser Hussain and the boys 20 years ago would have got away with that, but you can't get away with that anymore. He was struck outside the line. You take that shot out of it, it's LBW, and ball tracking showed that to be the case. But for some reason, the standing umpire decides that a shot had been played, so not only do England not get the wicket, they lost the review. By this point, Joe Root's just, well, he's having a, he's having a chuckle, but inside he must be fuming. Uh, the problem is it's, it's perception of whether uh, Rowett is playing a shot at the ball or not. If you look at it, and playing devil's advocate, his back path is actually coming down the line of the ball, but because he's got his leg across too much onto the offside, he can't access the ball. So in theory... He's not really playing a shot. So it comes back to umpire's perception of the situation. The difficulty is, I think, from what we saw on film, Joe Root asked after he'd referred the umpire, was he playing a shot or not? Maybe in hindsight, is he playing a shot there, sir? No, yes. And then you, re then you make your decision on referral or not on the back of that because England lost a review. But um, it's a really fine line. As a spinner, I'm saying he's too good a player to miss it by this much and, and to get his back behind his pad. So I'm with the, he's probably not playing a shot, but I can understand the perception that he might be because of that back path trying to access the ball. Well, it's the part of the show that you're always waiting for, stat attack. And uh, today's stat attack uh, involves, well, the lack of extras. Because, of course, in the first test match, India were overstepping every delivery it seemed, and that little siren was being fired off. But when England bowled, quite the reverse. 329 India scored. That is the highest score ever in the history of Test cricket when no extras have gone against the bowling team. So there you go, more of the same tomorrow. Um, in terms of day three, bats, it's very difficult to see anything other than the domination continuing for India. Yeah, and I think it's psychological as much as the runs that they'll be looking to get. Uh, they'll be looking to pile some more pressure on England's bowlers, make them drag that into the third game. Um, no matter what the result is, I think there's only really one result now from, from the position that England find themselves in, but it's what they can take. It's how many uh, sort of punches they can throw back at India to make them feel like, oh, hang on a second, we're not going to have everything our own way. I thought the spinners actually closed out the innings tonight pretty well. I thought Leach bowled nicely and Moen looked back to his consistent best and, and actually asked some really good questions of, uh, of Rohit Sharma and uh, Pujara. There were a few sort of running down the wicket and spitting up off the pad and what have you. The boys played well, of course they did, the batsmen, but uh, they need to ask some more questions. They need to keep fighting, but um, I expect India to push on, try and get 150 runs plus, try and make it that 400 magical total that England are chasing. And then the spinners will go about their business with a sprinkling of Sharma or whatever fast bowler they want to, uh, just to pry a wicket every now and again. Um, but it will be uh, very much the Axar and, uh, and Ashwin show, I think. Brilliant stuff. Gareth Batty will be with me throughout this uh, test match. And Outside Edge is the place to be following the action from every day's play. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Use the comments section below. And thanks for watching.